Most of them gon' talk, I know, I know Most of them gon' fall, I know, I know We gon' bet it all, I know, oh, oh, oh. We gon' bet it all, I know, oh. I will go What's up, footy fans? Welcome to the first episode of Backyard Footy. I have my featured guests here, Toby Adewale and Kay Banjo. Before we get started, I'm going to give you a little background on myself. I grew up in Gatlinburg, Maryland. I went to Good Council High School where I played basketball and soccer. From there, I went to George Mason University for four years. After college, I went to open trials for the Richmond Kickers, made the team, and played the past three seasons there. Last year, I played for the Bethlehem Steel, and now here I am in my fifth year with the Pittsburgh Riverhounds. Now for my guests. Watching Kay and Toby progress through their careers from high school to college and now the pros has been awesome to watch, and I'm happy for my boys. Toby I've known since he was a little boy playing with his older brother. Watching him from when he was a young boy growing up to playing against each other to college has been fun to see him mature and progress in his career. Seeing him perform last year in his rookie season to now playing with him has all been surreal and I'm happy for him. He's a character on and off the field. He's very passionate about his game, but also enjoys what he does every day. Kay, my dude, growing up playing against each other on different clubs to growing up playing with each other in the same club was a lot of fun. I remember playing with him as a forward, dominating in our club, killing everybody on academy trips and on away trips, to then playing with each other now to now playing against each other when we were pros last year, and look where we are. Never would I imagine we'd be on the same team as pros from playing against each other in the opposite positions in college to now here we are. It's all surreal. So, th so without further ado, I'd like to welcome my guests, Toby and Kay. <clears throat> What's good, y'all? How you doing? Excited to be here. <laughs> so how you guys been doing Pittsburgh these past two years? Um, first year, I mean, it was a bit tricky because, you know, it was my rookie season. So, like, obviously as a rookie, you come in and you're not scared, but you're eager to, you know, start your new journey as a pro. Um, this is the only life you're going to be living for now. You know, playing soccer is your job. Mm -hmm. And, I mean... It's not an easy life to get into because it's a different level from college, but it was definitely exciting, you know, especially now that I'm here second year after what I proved last year. So, I mean, I'm excited to have a good season this year. I mean, just being here is a blessing. I mean, I've been doing this. I've been to a lot of places with this soccer move, and, and a lot of it has been ups and downs. and. Mm -hmm. I finally put a you know put the pen on the on the contract and finally right. signed something because I've been drafted, been in the national team and everything. It just as soon as I get to the top, right. I feel like some of those have and I fall off. So it was like I had plenty of nights and I was like, man, I'm done with this soccer shit. Like, but you know, I had reasons for playing. That everybody like, like you can't not play. Like mm -hmm. you've been playing this, doing this since like like you said, like since you were eleven, you were ten when it was fun then, but mm -hmm. you know, you get to an age where you're like, All right, like it's either you make money off this or I just right. chill off and get nine to five and don't nobody wanna do a nine to five. So like, that's the <laughs> I look at everybody wake up at fucking what, seven AM right. like, don't come back till six, that's dead. Like that's not that's not the life here. You wake up, you train for what, two hours a day? Mm -hmm. And you're done the rest of the day. Like, that's why we got time for this podcast. Right, like, we're not right. doing nothing right now. So, I mean, it's a blessing because a lot of people want to do it. Um, a lot of people don't get the chance. And there's a lot of ballers out there that don't get the mm -hmm. chance. But so when you do get the chance, it's kind of one of those things that you got to you gotta take your shit and run with it. So let's talk about that, the grind of being a professional athlete in the USL. You know, people think when you're a professional that you made it. But realistically, we know we don't get paid much, and it's more so about the opportunity. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys have to get jobs in the off season just to pay their car notes and all right. these little rent and those kind of things. And people expect you when you come home to give them some money for this and that. But realistically, we know the grind, and it's not really about the money. So talk right. about the grind a little bit. So I mean, the grind has been something that I've been living by ever since I started taking this seriously ever since I knew, like, I wanted to be a professional soccer player, which was during academy days, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've always been on a team where it's been not the best team. Like, it's been very underrated. You know, I went to GW, not a big mm -hmm. soccer school. Same, so yeah, yeah, being trying. a pro coming out of that school especially is, you know, it's kind of a big deal. So 
obviously I didn't take, I mean, I think I managed the situation, but I didn't take it for granted at all. But like, when you're coming out of school like that, you're expected to be, to work hard. Cause you know, some people say it's luck, but I mean, a lot of it's just hard working. I mean, obviously some of it was luck that I was seen by the coach last year. Right. He liked me, he invited me to a invite trial and then he signed me the day after the trial. So, I mean, a lot of it was the grind. And if you don't continue grinding, you could lose your spot just like yeah, that. Just like and that. then you, who knows when you'll get your next opportunity, you know, could be 10, 15 games down the line right. whatever. I mean, like, like Toby said, it's about having an opportunity and taking advantage of it. Because like I said, not a lot of people get the chance to showcase their opportunity or show their face, their talent. All right. And they just be at home like, yo, okay, like, oh, you got this for me, you got that for me. I'm just looking at them like, right. this is not even where I want to be. Like, it's, it's a start to a lot of things. But when you think professional, you're just thinking, oh, Messi Ronaldo got everything. Why don't you got everything? I'm like, because I'm not in Messi Ronaldo's mm-hmm. league. Like, trying to get there but it's all a stepping stone to everything like usl is actually bigger than what i expected before like this competition is real like it's not a joke a lot of people watch it on tv and you think oh no this shit is easy like what the hell but once you get out here it's not easy because you you might think you're better than the next dude but if the coach don't think so you're on the bench you're not playing you're not making money you're not you know showcasing yourself and everybody just forget about you like that's how it works everywhere like you wake up try to get a job come out of school try to get a job if you not doing better than the next dude you go be home like yeah. you had this nine to five job yeah. but you don't yeah. and that's what a lot of people don't get like it's the same way people work out there for nine to five to try to get one position it's like 300 people trying to fight for one position one company and this here is like 600 players trying to fight for one position mm-hmm. and it's like that's what that's just trial so once you make the 24th ran roster you still got work in practice. So it's like, with the NASL folding. Yeah, exactly. And then thing. like NASL too, that's yeah. just another whole league coming in your league. And it's players in that league yeah. too. So it's like everything add up. And if you don't get your own, somebody else going to take your spot. And that's, oh, yeah. that's really what it boils down to with this with this USL league. So, I mean, I, I, I commend people that are in the league and staying in the league even if they're not playing because – it's hard because you, you feel like you done made it, but then it's like, you're not playing. So it's like, now you just really got to grind again. So it's like, it's a whole nother job in itself. So, mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's pretty much my, my say on that. It's taking the phrase no days off to the highest extent possible because if you take a day off or even try to, then there's going to be someone grinding. Let's say you're coming out of college and you're trying to win the position of a veteran that has a family and mm-hmm. kids to feed, obviously yeah. he's not gonna, you know, give up that spot easily, you know, but you could have to grind for it. So it's just little things like that. So how did academy and club help you guys get to where you are now? I know me and Kay play for Patona. Who'd you play for, Toby? Patona as well? Yeah, 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 the younger group. Did you play with Gideon as well? Yeah. yeah. Talk about that experience a little bit. Would you say that helped you to where you are in your career? Well, I've known Gideon before Potomac, uh, when he came to America, he played with my youth team, uh, MSC United. Mm-hmm. And right off the bat, when he when we saw him try out, we usually do fitness. And a lot of kids come in, they try out, they start up with the group with us, like, because we're usually the faster out of the people trying out. And mm-hmm. they end up falling off throughout, you know, let's say towards the middle, they start falling off to the back. But he stayed up top, so we're like, okay, this guy's coming in trying to prove something. And immediately when we started doing like drills and games, you could just see he was on another level. Mm-hmm. Then you find out he was what, three years younger than us. It's like, wow. You know, I mean, I've seen him grow as a player throughout. I mean, we played on Only together, Potomac together, and Bethesda. So, I mean, he's definitely, I mean, it's, it's great to watch, you know. He's doing his thing right now in Arsenal. So, mm-hmm. I mean, it's definitely great to watch his journey. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. What about you, Kay? You feel like Potomac Academy or club? You play for MSC as well, right, going mm-hmm. on? You feel like those are good stepping stones? I mean, I think anything you go through to get to where you're at is honestly a part of the journey. Like, right. if even parents yelling at you about you not having a good game or you missing this goal or you mm-hmm. scoring this goal, like, all that is a fuel to get to where you want to get to. Because, like mm-hmm. I said, if 
if you just out here just taking shit for granted, you're not gonna get the results at the end of the day. Mm-hmm. So Potomac, MSC, the coaches, my high school coach, I didn't even want to play high school soccer. Like I I went to Largo, like it's <laughs> that's that's so far from soccer. Like there's football and basketball, that's it. But I skipped what, I skipped playing high school soccer, what, my ninth grade year, tenth grade year, eleventh grade year, I played because the coach is my fucking teacher, so mm-hmm. I couldn't avoid him. So mm-hmm. he was like, hey, you avoided me ninth and tenth grade, you mm-hmm. go play this year. Right. I was like, nah, you know, I, I'm playing Potomac Academy, I'm chilling. This man hit me with the, okay, well, first exam come. Exam came, well, I was struggling. <laughs> I was struggling, looking at this fucking, this history too. I was like, I ain't American. <laughs> <laughs> so I was taking this fucking exam, and my man literally graded it. I got, think I got like a C in the joint. Next thing you know, he hit me. He's like, you sure you don't want to play? I was like, you know what? I think I might. Uh, he'll sign me up. That day, I played the first game, played center back. Because obviously, you just feel like you good. You got to play at the back. Because he wants you to secure everything. I'm scoring goals from the back. Led the fucking league and scoring goals from the back. That's crazy. Next thing you know, what I get in class? An A+. Plus. Oh, yeah. I ain't take one exam. <laughs> so, I was great on people's papers. Like, <laughs> so it's just... It just Everybody contributes. Like Supplies even when you don't way. think you contribute, and like people that talk shit and you know talk down on you because you're not here, you're not there. Mm-hmm. I use all that as a fuel. Like oh, yeah, you I use you. all that as fuel. Like I had this one dude. I don't throw shade on people, but I don't even know his name. But you probably you know the dude I'm talking about. Mm. He's you know he we play some pickup tournament like some Thanksgiving tournament. Not even anything serious. Mm-hmm. We playing and. This man, we were winning in the final, and I just remember this man hit me with the, okay, who you think you are, man? Like, you just like us. I'm like, who the fuck are you? Like, <laughs> I don't even know who you are, but you know who I am, but right. you still talking shit. And but, I, be, I mean, a lot winning. of people that talk down on you are people that haven't done what